Since Captain Base decided to get the ship in shape for the next random journey, the crew had time to explore Turtle Island more deeply. While Bernoulli explored the neighboring village, Laplace and Pascal investigated a rumor about strange sightings on the top of Tortuga Mountain. I tell you, there is a strange creature on top of our mountain, worshipping the moon at night. Some villagers have seen it from a distance, murmuring strange incantations. That sounds scary. Hmm, it could also be a wild animal though. Don't be afraid, Claire. I guess we have time to lift the mystery of Tortuga Mountain. We will go there tonight. While Laplace and Pascal prepared for the excursion to the mountaintop, Bernoulli accompanied his new friend, Maccabé, from the neighboring village, who was heading to Claire in order to discuss a serious matter. Claire, we need to talk. You know, we the people from Frogville try to protect and even raise frogfish. And we cannot watch you and your friends make our efforts worthless by just catching them. Hi, Maccabé. It's good to have you here. I wanted to tell you already that Captain Ben arrived here some weeks ago and started fishing in the sea area between our villages. He wanted to repeatedly catch a hundred fish to check the frogfish ratio. I told him not to overfish our shores. Yeah, this white-haired guy. I told him so too and luckily he stopped. But Claire, we have to find a better agreement. We need a clear boundary between the area of the sea that is protected and the one that is open for fishing. I know, I think you are right. What about drawing a line going through some of the islands in between? Hmm, I don't think a random line will preserve the most flourishing frogfish habitats. Oh, Maccabe, I was also out fishing the other day and caught some frogfish. But now that I know that those are so important to you, I feel sorry. I have an offer for both of you. I will go out with a boat and spot frogfish and normal fish sites, so you will have binary data to make your boundary agreement. Sounds like a good proposal. Let's give it a try. Ernesto! Go and find Captain Base. I think she might like the problem. And later on, you can help me with your fish spotting eyes from above. That sounds like a plan. I'm on my way. While Bernoulli started spotting frogfish sites, Laplace and Pascal reached Tortuga Mountain, waiting for the night to come. Look, something is coming. Well. We will overpower that creature. Oh, it's Captain Van. <laughs> oh, Captain Van, how random to find you. What are you doing out here in this crystal clear, starry night? Oh, you just scared me to death. I nearly smashed my telescope. Again. What a delight to find you, and not the creature we fear to approach at this nightly hour. From the odds. I also thought you were some wild animal roaming around. Didn't expect any humans out here. Keep that light away, my eyes need darkness. So, what's your business here? Isn't this a strange place to enjoy a delightful night? The villagers already feared that the monster was up here to mischief on the mountain top. Well, I think I can tell you. I've been watching the stars to solve the quest of Treasure Island. Since the odds are not so bad for Turtle Island being the right place, I followed the second part of the treasure map. It states, Go to the top of the island and spot the guardian of the bear. In the middle of the shortest night, he will guide you to the treasure. Follow Actuos, 10 times the height angle in degrees, then start Digging. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you are here just to measure the angle of a star at the right moment? Yes, yes. Right, you are. But the task is harder than expected. The shortest night of the year was some five days ago, but it was cloudy for several days and I didn't see anything. So I will have to interpolate the correct angles 
from the data are recorded before and after the bad weather. That's really tough, Captain Van. Stars fascinate me too and I have some experience in this field. How did you manage to find the right moment to take your measurement? Well, the biggest problem is to find the middle of the night. You see, I use these special hour candles that have an accuracy of about a minute. I start measuring the time at sunset and do continuous measurements throughout the night. At sunrise, I can then conclude which of these measurements have been taken at exact midnight by halving the time passed. Bah! Look at the measurements. The variation is so strong, I will never find the right path through these dots to interpolate my desired angles. Maybe we can help you. Captain Base has already applied this fantastic formula and if you know the errors, we may set up an inverse problem that gives you a probability for the fit curve. Yeah, you may be right. Let's go down there tomorrow and ask Base. I'm running out of candles anyway. On the next day, while Pascal Laplace and Ven descended from Tatuga Mountain, Bernoulli returned to Captain Base, Maccabe and Claire who were pondering on a smart way to find a fair solution for drawing a boundary between the fishing grounds. Oh Bernoulli, I see you took your oath to spot the fish very seriously. Yes, the frogfish was so fascinating. First, I fell from the boat and then I started diving and that really helped me spotting them. So here is a map with the fishing grounds. Thank you for the valuable data Bernoulli. It supports my claims to move away from the plan to use the small islands as a boundary. I see, but please be fair, we still need access to our fishing grounds and they should not be too far away or even in the rough ocean. Maybe a straight line would cut off too much. My dear friends, I have a technique in mind that might help to classify nature reserve and fishing grounds in a fair manner. We may also discuss the shape of the boundary. A different model than a linear one could help. And we might also be able to include your preferences, Claire. Just let me think about this. <laughs> Can you help Captain Bates and her crew to solve Maccabees and Claire's fish borderline dispute and Vance noisy store path interpolation? How can one predict the position of a star using unreliable data? How to derive a probability map for the treasure from that uncertain star path prediction? Having a map of frogfish and non-frogfish fish grounds, how to draw a fair straight line between them? How to include Claire's considerations in the coast function and how to change the model? <coughs> Watch the next video to gain more insight into regression, classification and error analysis. And don't forget to check out the interactive maps with adjustable frogfish distributions.